amazing placement. What a shot. A gutsy overhead. Aspect of mental toughness here that's just different. I like the body language of all four players. Oh, look at that shot! Great hands from Kiro. Hello and welcome to the 2023-24 APTA Tour presented by Volley. We are live from the Country Club in Brookline, Massachusetts, bringing you the 2024 APTA Boston Nationals presented by Aon. Boston Nationals is the 16th and last stop on the 23-24 APTA Tour with live streaming brought to you by the APTA membership, the APTA national sponsors, Volley and Fusion, and local sponsors, Aon, Pure Hockey, Labor, Woolly Boy Distillers, Columbus Overgroup, Diego Kilgore Team Compass, Hillary Maddox Team Compass, Crestwood Advisors, DraftKings, FBE Insurance Services Incorporated, Harpoon, Needham Bank, Norfolk and Dedham Insurance, Pure Insurance, UBS, WAC, Win Stanley Enterprises. I'm Mike Raleigh, along with Dave Broderick, bringing you the men's quarterfinals behind Durant Mitchell versus Christian and West. Dave, welcome to the uh, broadcast. Hey, Mike, how are you? Welcome. Uh, thank you for having me. And uh, looks like we're in for a fun match today. Um, we see at the net warming up on the right hand side of your screen in the ad court is Stephen Mitchell. And now backing up to the baseline on the left hand side of your court is the newly inducted Hall of Famer, Johan Duran. Gentlemen, this quarterfinal round match. Best of three sets with and their opponents to the left of the screen in black right. is Eric West, in the and to the right is Tomas Wayland, Christian. Massachusetts, Johan Durant, his partner from Natick, Massachusetts, Stephen Mitchell. On my left, in the deuce court, from Cincinnati, Ohio, Eric West. His partner from Hoboken, New Jersey, Tomas Christian. And that's Dave Najedlik, our uh, chair umpire, doing the introductions. Yes, we'll be serving first. This is an exciting matchup we got here. We were talking uh, a little bit before we came on the air, and uh, why don't we continue that discussion about uh, kind of the keys? Yeah, I, this I think matchup. Like, yeah, when we were talking about it earlier, Mike, you know, I really believe, you know, as we all know, that um, Durant and Mitchell sort of have their own unique style. They like playing an up-tempo game. They like creating activity. Um, they like creating speed. Um, you know, they want to try to make their opponents uncomfortable um, and get them to hit shots that they really don't want to hit. You know, I think it's going to come down to is Christian and West going to be able to play at the tempo they want to play at, which is going to be a little bit more of a slower, methodical uh, type pace, you know, and it's going to be interesting to see you know because i think christian has thomas christian has a big forehand but he picks and chooses a little bit more i think eric west tends to you know he'll go for big shots a little bit more frequently a little bit more often um and he has the ability to drive both his forehand and his backhand so you know it'll be interesting to see how this uh, matchup works out through the course of uh this morning yeah and if we you know we look at um I mean, like you said, Johan and Stephen Mitchell, they, they love to play kind of fast, but they also like to create chaos, <laughs> you know, in engagement when they play their, you know, their best, at, you know, when there is that engagement. And I love to watch them play because it's, it's such a dynamic, you know, whether they're in the backcourt with blitzing or uh, in the front court with the various spins overheads and speeds of the overheads. Right. Mike, you could say it's fun to watch. Would you call it fun yeah, to watch when you see Johan and Steven Durant and Mitchell play? Oh, I love watching them play. It'll and be interesting to you know, see. For, uh, I think. Go ahead, Mike. Sorry. 
forgot what I was going to say. Hopefully you remember. <laughs> well, I was going to say it's going to be interesting to see also, you know, Durant and Mitchell being the hometown favorites, how uh, Christian and West, and look, they're starting out right away by serving and staying back. And just like that, they're back on the net. And we've seen, you know, in the in the in the past, uh, Durant and Mitchell are equally. You know, I, I think all these top players are equally as comfortable in the backcourt as they are in the, uh, you know, at the net. But, you know, historically we see that Durant Mitchell, people almost defer and let them take the net over, and they spend a lot more of their, you know, percentage of their points at the net. We'll see if that holds true throughout this match. And that's an interesting point, which I agree 100%, because how well Mitchell and Durant volley and how well they hit their overheads. But I think the one thing you might see is they do tend to get a little bit more impatient at the net, hitting overhead after overhead after overhead and having the ball keep coming back. Right, so we'll have that battle of wills, whether you know Christian and Wes can kind of slow the game down and take the air out of the point. And again, you saw there the return by Duran, blitzing following his own return in, creating speed, creating, you know, like we talked about, a little bit of chaos. And there he goes and hits one of his slash overhead winners. Boy, and Durant and Mitchell, they've had, uh, you know, the three matches last uh, yesterday. They went back-to-back -back three setters the first and second round and then uh, kind of had a little bit of a role in their third uh, round of 32 or round of 16 match last night. So I think they kind of found their footing. You know, the hometown crowd cheering them on, maybe some nerves to start with, but it seems like they've found their, found their jam. Yeah, no, and I, I was saying it earlier on when, when we before we got on air, you know, Mitchell and Durant were out here early this morning hitting some balls, practicing serve, return, and volley. I said, look at these guys. This is they're they're pra they're practicing. They mean business here. You know, they didn't just walk on the court and say, okay, we're ready to play. They're they're uh, they're focused, and and I think you know we're gonna get to see the best of them throughout the rest of this tournament. You know, having that lefty-righty combo, you know, with the forehands in the middle is a bit of a blessing and a curse. Be interesting to see how Christian and West, you know, handle those middle balls. Really good uh, lob there by Johan Duran. Mike, you really got a good view of seeing that last sequence with Durant and Mitchell shifting game, over on the baseline Durant to their left, Mitchell, looking to create offense One with their forehand. So, again, set. it's going to be a battle of wills as to, you know, who can get the ball, keep it away from the strengths of Durant and Mitchell. Um, you know, and for West and Christian, keeping that ball into safe spots on the court, which I don't know how many there are, but I think that's going to be what, yeah. you know, they're looking to do. Yeah, if you know where that safe spot is, please tell me, because, <laughs> I mean, I, it, you know, is it uh, Durant's backhand? Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> 15.
All right. Here we go. I also, you know, it's it's only one game into the match, Mike, but I don't think Christian and West want to let this first set, you know, get ahead or get away from them a little bit early because I, I do feel like Durant and Mitchell play so much freer and so much better when they're when they're playing for, with the lead. 15 low. Yeah. They're great, you know, they're I mean, I mean they're great in any <laughs> at any point, but I mean you give them they're heck of a front runners, you know, and boy, they get an early break and then they solidify it here with a hold. It's it's a tough uh, tough hill to climb for Christian and West. 15, so I think you're, you're absolutely right. They got to jump out here and see if they can bounce right back. I think for Durant and Mitchell, when they're up at the net, that's going to be the one ball they've got to be careful about is trying to go to the backhand of West because that is his, you know, he li he really likes hitting that shot. He hits it well. He wins a lot of points on it. He creates a lot of pressure. So, you know, I think that's going to be something that they've got to pay attention to when they're at the net themselves. We see another big backhand there. Wow, that thing was smoked. You know, I, I had called um, the... Indianapolis Open final, you know, a couple weeks ago, and their plan against McInerney and West was they hit a lot of heavy, rolling, you know, balls into West Corner, and it was almost like a single-minded, uh, you know, game plan. And over the course of the match, they were able to hit and, and break West down in the screens and it was a different a different weather i mean it was like you know 30 degrees cooler um but they hit predominantly you know those heavy rolling overheads right into west corner and i think that was the difference in the match so it'll be interesting to see what happens today God, what a great get advantage and i think the the rolling overhead into the west corner will be effective you know, as long as they can get it into the corner, into the screen, and keep it low, as we saw right there from Durant. And it's interesting that we're all, we're watching this where, for the team of Durant and Mitchell, when they're at the net, they keep getting Durant in the blue shirt over on the left-hand side to be the dominant overhead hitter right now. And that's just because his overhead, you know, he could probably do more damage. Wouldn't you agree? That, I mean... It's, Stephen Mitchell's no slouch hitting overheads, but there's very few players in the game that are as dominant, you know, day in and day out with their overheads. No, I agree. And, and Durant's overhead has a variation of speed and spin. And, you know, it's. I, I also think when Durant's hitting the overheads, there is a little bit of fear factor on the baseline as to is he going to cut it? Is he going to drop it? Is he going to hit a hard roller at me? So I, I think it's a little bit more unnerving when you see Durant going to hit the overheads. Yeah, I had a uh, funny, funny story. I had texted uh, Mike Marino and Danny Oaks, you know, two Chicago guys that took you know, the first set in the round of 32 over Durant and Mitchell. And I, you know, I said, hey, great match. Um, and they said it was a lot of fun. And. You know, they came out on the losing end, obviously. But I said, uh, "Did you hit any of the uh, the hard hard overheads at, in the match to Marino? Because that's a shot that he likes to hit." And he's like, "I chose not to engage." <laughs> right. You know what they all? You know what they say about payback? Yes, that's right. You don't want to poke the bear either. <laughs> This is a big, uh, big game here. More so for Christian and West. I think we agree on that, right? Yeah, no. But again, you don't want to let Durant and Mitchell get, uh, you know, get ahead and play from with the lead because it kind of frees them up a little bit, and you know, we we really start to see their ability and what they can do.
to you. There's that that Stand overhead. I think there's Mitchell. just a little bit of a flinch there. From well, West. you saw you saw that he hit that low slash overhead and kind of got West pinned in the corner, and then he followed it up with the hard roller at him, which was again that's the dynamic play that he possesses to be able to mix up his overheads and change it up, not knowing which one's coming. Fifteen, love. Good drive there from West. Cut, cut oh. Johan a little flat-footed on that volley. Yep. Mike, I just want to say hello to a big group out at Morris County here in New Jersey watching us during the New Jersey Men's Winter League Classic. Rob Skin owns the HUD Commander, president of the league. I know those guys are up at Morristown playing and, and watching us in between. So I want to say hello to them and wish all the guys there good luck. This is the tail end of the season, isn't it? Yeah, everyone's trying to pack in the last uh, bunch of events for the year. There's, you know, it's like, which 30. pool is he going to use when he gets that short lob? It's about six different ways that he can <laughs> right. shake things up. What a lob volley from Stephen Mitchell. Wow. Hey, Mike, it's interesting to see that Johan has really developed that slash overhead into the deuce court over the course of the years. And it, he puts a tremendous amount of spin on the ball and it, you know, it's really difficult for the player to, to handle. Durant Mitchell, Durant Mitchell lead. Aon is so proud to be a title sponsor of the APTA Nationals. Aon exists to shape decisions for the better. We provide our clients in human capital solutions that give them the clarity and confidence to make better decisions to protect and grow their business. Aon is in the business of better decisions. Aon, one of our court sponsors. We want to thank Aon and all of our sponsors, Mike, for uh, their contributions to the Nationals and throughout the year supporting the APTA Tour. It, uh, it's really great to have you know, businesses and people that are willing to sponsor these events and, and make them as great as they are. So true. You know, and, and back to your, your point about that, that slash overhead um, that we saw Durant hit, you know, and, and I think that it's important for you know, people at home when they talk about kind of attack overheads, that first thing that they think about is, well, I got to hit it, you know, into a side screen or I got to hit it with spin and I think one of the things that makes that overhead so effective is that it's landing so deep in the court and, you know, coupled with, you know, the, the rotation of the ball, the depth on it, being able to attack with depth where that ball's bouncing and then coming into the body of the receiver. It's, I mean, it's like they, they, it handcuffs them because it's stealing time and, you know, they have to let that low ball go to the screen and it's, it's just kind of really tough to handle because of the depth. There's some movement on that ball. Yeah. Earlier, early on in this match, 
I don't know if Durant and Mitchell have hit two drives into the same spot. They're really stretching Christian and West out at the net just by, you know, moving their drives around and, and hitting hitting their spots. Yeah, and we saw him hit four four drives in a row, five out of seven shots. Fifteen. That's a great oh. ball. Wink to uh, Mitchell there, but yeah, that that spot spot drives. I don't know if there's anybody better in the game than those two to. I mean, I, I don't think we teach driving four balls in a row, but you know when you're the number one team team in at nationals, 15, the number one seed, 30. they do things slightly better than the average players. <laughs> right. Um, but you're absolutely right. Spot to spot, changing their locations. I think I don't watch you with like that, that last point. I think that's the pace of play West and Christian want to play at. It's just that when they get the opportunity, they've got to make them hit a volley. Right. And I was going to say. I was just going to say. I don't. I don't argue with the the decision. It just, you know, it was came. The volume was a little too loud. You know, right. and they they've got to be willing to work that point um, and go through that series where they get that drive and then. You know, it's it's not a winner. It's going to be just a test of the volleyers, and and then they got to rework it. it. Sounds easy, but boy, oh boy. 30, 40. And I think there's a lot of factors where, you know, Christian knows in his mind what great volleyers Durant and Mitchell are, so. You think that plays a factor into it sometimes where you feel like you've got to do something a little bit more, a little bit better, because, you know, that might be the only way they're going to miss a volley. Yeah, I agree. Um, but, you it, you know, if, the, if the, in the last you know, three and a half games or four games that we've seen, the only volleys that they've missed is when they've gotten them off the net. They've gotten Durant or Mitchell off the net, and then they've hit that off-speed ball that drops below net level. You know, so it, it's kind of... If, if if history of the last four games, that hardball is not going to hurt them. Right. Because the ball tends to stay above the level of the net. What a great get from West. You see the flinch there. He was there. West was ready to defend that hard overhead. A little cat and mouse game here going on. And that's, I think that's the Durant fear factor with that big overhead. Wow. We we'll miscommunication there. When and Dave watching watching so far, I'm not seeing anything that West and Christian are doing and in the backcourt. Make Durant and Mitchell uncomfortable you know it it it, it i mean it, um and i think you know christian working that lob a little bit more down the line in front of him and getting mitchell to back off the net it sounds easy but i think right now we've got too many balls they lead four games to love first set by grant mitchell 
or by Durant, sorry, on the left-hand side of the court. Right, and it's it's not really creating any openings or any space because, you know, as the, as the righty-righty combination, you want the player on the left hitting the majority of the overheads, so they're really not doing anything to disrupt or cause confusion for the team of Durant and Mitchell. I also thought in the, the last game there were a couple of, when they had a break point, uh, Christian and West, they had some drive opportunities, but to your point earlier, they weren't getting it to the guy off the net. They were hitting the ball hard, and the net player was able to cut those off. 15, wow. yeah. You know, and it's so easy kind of being the, arm, the armchair quarterbacks here and uh, watching this on how we can, you know, how we would do it. But wow. I, mean, I think that's one of the going to be one of the keys is can they start – Christian working that uh, lob down the line, generating kind of some movement for Mitchell to come off the net and, and get near the service line, creating some holes to potentially drive into. Wow. See the range of Mitchell there. Again, to your point from earlier, I, I like the decision. I think it was the right choice to hit a drive. You know, maybe at this stage of the match, looking to get on the board, maybe aim for the middle of the court, not so much try to go down the line. But again, you're trying to find or put the ball in spots where Durant and Mitchell maybe not are expecting it. And we've had, you know, it, it's not like Christian and West haven't had. I think they had break points in both the service games of Durant and Mitchell so far. Um, and they were up 45 in this game. I mean, it, it just shows you how tough mentally and how well Durant and Mitchell are playing right now that, you know, they're fighting for every point. Here they're up for love and they're down 1540. This was a great... Great drive off the of hanging Vincent cut overhead. West. <laughs> you didn't want to get in the way of that forehand. I mean, that thing just sounds different too, you know. It. Uh... <laughs> Game, Christian West, Durant Mitchell lead four games to one in the first set. Volley would like to thank the APTA Mitchell tournament Sarah. host clubs players and pros for an amazing 2023-2024 season. With over 1.3 million balls thrown this year, Volley creates a community to connect pros and players while giving users personalized performance insights to track progress and improve their game. Download the Volley app now by searching Volley Racket in your app store. For more information, visit getvolley.com slash get started. We'll see you all next season. Fifteen. You think Eric West with the Skyline Chili shirt is he sponsored? Uh, sponsored by Skyline Chili? What do you think? 
You ever had Skyline chili? I have not. Oh, you pretty know good what stuff. You're it's good stuff. It's, it's yeah, it's uh, Cincinnati. Uh, I mean, if you ever go to Cincinnati, you got to have it. It's usually something you'd eat, uh, uh, you know, after a, a late night prayer session or something like that. All right. <laughs> Dave, we have a full day of uh, full day of live streaming here for Brookline, Mass. This is an exciting, uh, obviously the biggest tournament of the year, but boy, from you know 9:30 a.m. all the way into the women's finals tonight, starting at 6:30. Full day. So if you're a fan, you got no excuses. Be able to catch some of this great action. Yeah, no, and it's going to be all great matches throughout the day. You know, as we know, the deeper you get into the tournament, the usually longer and the, the tighter the matches get. So for everyone that can't make it to the country club in Brookline, Mass, tune in and watch it right here. We're streaming two courts uh, throughout the day. Got another quarterfinal match uh, going on the other live stream. Frazier and Morgan. Who are they playing against? 30 all. These points are all big, but Christian West, boy, there's a big difference between 4 2 and 5 1. It's amazing to watch, too, the range of Durant at the net. You know, how how big he plays. When I say big, it just means the amount of court that he can cover. And it's not just, you know, side to side, east to west. You know, we know his range with the blitz, but I love to watch him at the net, how nonplussed he is. You know, regardless of the speed of the drive. Wow. That was a pretty impressive volley there by Mitchell. Christian was sitting on top of the net knowing the drive was coming and Mitchell still was able to get it back for a winner. Game Durant Mitchell. They lead five games to one. First set. You know, the discussion we had earlier about the way that Durant and Mitchell are able to, to disrupt the court and create kind of movement. And we just saw it. There was a great example there, you know, with using utilizing that drop shot to start. You know, they point six shots later, but it's, uh, it's fun to watch how they kind of use the entire court to, to force movement from their opponents, creating kind of confusion and or, you know, open up holes in the court. Great stuff. And I think everyone out there watching, what they should take notice is that when they hit the drop shot or they hit a shot to create space, they don't rush the next ball. They still patiently ball wait for it to come 30. to them. They take their time, and that allows them to hit the open spots, continuing oh. that movement. So right. 
You know, they're not really reaching, lunging to try to attack the ball. They're still waiting for it and letting the play sort of, you know, play out. Yeah, and it, it, and it isn't, you know, I don't even think the expectation is that that drop shot is going to be a winner as well, right? Right. It's just kind of the initiator of the movement. And both players are kind of on the 15, same page. When they make that volley, they know where they're putting it. All right, Mike, we have our first couple of set points here for Durant and Mitchell. Look how Mitchell steps all the way off the court. Two step points saved here. 40. And I think that what's helped Christian and West is, you know, if they can get Durant and Mitchell reaching for volleys at the net, you know, they've they've seemed to have some success with that, you know, and, but I think it might be a matter of just being a little bit more patient, hitting a couple more balls, but ultimately getting Durant and Mitchell on a volley to try to stretch and not really have their feet set and, and ready for it. 100% agree, but on, even on that last point, they were purely reactionary. I mean, based on the shots that, you know, Durant and Mitchell were hitting. Right. And Advantage, yeah, Christian. They did get him to reach, but we're not seeing kind of their ability to kind of create that reach when they're in the backcourt, kind of on their terms, right? Yeah, no, I agree. And we're seeing here late in the first set, uh, on the baseline, West and Christian are switching sides. Um, they did this a bunch yesterday against Broderick and Kaler. And uh, looks like they're going back to a little bit more, putting Tomas Christian over there in the do side of the court and Eric West now playing the ad side of the court. And why do you think they're doing that? I don't know, maybe getting Eric West a few more looks at his backhand down the middle. Maybe allowing him to cover a little bit more of the court. Great hands. See West anticipating that drive coming and gets it all over the net. See them there switching out again. Mike, from watching this also and from the times I've seen West play this year, you know, I think him being over there in the ad court also gives him a little bit more freedom to move around and, and creates activity for him, which I think, you know, when he's moving around and, and he's on the move hitting shots, he really excels. Yeah, and they were able to, when he was on the deuce side, they were able to, um, they and I, 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 I mean, Johan in particular was able to kind of pin him into that corner where the threat of that that hard overhead really kind of almost pinned him into the side screen and any ball that he was playing as he was tracking it down was off his backhand less likely to be driven so I agree with you I like the shift somewhat changed the dynamic of their backcourt play here 
Right, I think that was a great point where you said how, you know, just the the potential of what Johan could do with the overheads kind of pinned West into that corner and, and you know, didn't really allow him to move around too much over there. For as great a point it was, Ben's on an error, right? I mean, that's just such the such the game. Most of them do. Yeah, yes, they do. Advantage Mitchell. All right, and we see another set point here for Mitchell and Durant. Wow. Game set. Attack cut. Mitchell. We will be right back in just a moment after these messages right here on the APTA YouTube channel presented by My Paddle. Every day, big decisions are made without full information, overloaded by data, compounded by complexity. Better decisions are made in the light. with clarity and confidence. Aon is in the business of better decisions. Welcome back to the APTA Tour. We're live from the Country Club, bringing you the 2024 APTA Boston Nationals quarterfinal match behind uh, Durant and Mitchell over Christian and West in the first set 6-1. I'm Mike Raleigh alongside Dave Broderick. Dave, I think the end of that set was a little more promising for Christian West. We saw some adjustments uh, in the backcourt. You got any uh, thoughts as we dive into this second set? No, I, I agree with you. You know, I, I would have liked to see Christian and West maybe hold to make Durant and Mitchell serve out the first set. Um, you know, and also maybe give him a little bit of something to build on. Uh, you know, we, we've seen a tactical... Uh, change by Christian and West by switching sides of the court in the when they're on the baseline. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens here. And you know, I, I think, like we talked about before the match, uh, Durant and Mitchell sort of imposed their will on the pace of play that they wanted this match to be played at. And you know, it's, it's again, it's going to be hard for Christian and West to sort of slow the tempo down. But I think it's something they're going to have to do. 15, 30. And characteristic 30. miss there. Oh. Relatively benign screen. <laughs> little miscue. Durant thought that Steve Mitchell was going to step over and make that volley. Yep. Would you say that is like the fifth fifth break point that uh, West and Christian have failed to convert? You know, they've definitely had opportunities, um, you know, which I think they'll go back and 
look on and, and see that, you know, despite the score of the first set being 6-1, you know, they had chances, like you had mentioned earlier, to, to probably break serve two or three times, you know, and, and Durant and Mitchell, you know, have just played those points really, really steady and, and really well. drive there. I think had a little extra juice on it. You know, and I love that change they made in the backcourt. I think that is, uh, it really gives Johan and Steven a little bit different look when they're hitting their overheads and targeting kind of attack balls. And again, I think it just gives West more opportunities over there. Yeah, he seems to be more engaged uh, offensively where he was spending the majority of the time in the deuce side, the deuce corner. Christian West. Christian kind West of one game locked well, in defensively and set. reactionary rather than kind of getting into the set. point and being able to bring his to offense one. in. Shout out to David Chelson. Just got a text from him. 15. Love that blitz there. Puts a lot of pressure on the first volley. Uh, the communication. Christian's going back to hit that overhead. You hear West pull up. Nobody. He's watching for that blitz off the overhead. Everybody at home should take that that awareness onto the court when you play next time. Giving your partner that verbal warning if they're coming in behind blitz. Yeah, we talked about that in one of our matches yesterday about how, you know, when your partner's going back hitting the overhead, they're looking up in the air. So, as the non-hitting player at the net, you've really got to be their sort of eyes up there for them and kind of guide them to where they're going. If the baseline team is tending to blitz or um, come in on some of the overheads. And then your partner knows to just unload on that thing rather than trying to play a void. That overhead should be hit hard right at the blitzer. Dave, would you say the style of play, um, you know, between West and Christian, West is a little bit more aggressive, 
Wow, great overhead. And Christian is more of kind of the patient. I mean, although he's got great offense, is that a fair characterization of that team? Yeah, I would agree 100%. Um, like I said earlier, you know, I think Christian is a little bit more patient and, you know, chooses, you know, he, he's he's going to make sure he's not going to miss the shot when he's going for a bigger shot, where I think West does, um, you know, I don't want to say take more chances, but he is, you know, maybe on that 50-50 ball, he's looking to drive it more than he's looking to lob it, as we see there, you know, off of a pretty uh -huh. good overhead off the back screen. And I think because of that, is, West, you know, is, West creates a little bit more deception because, you know, he does typically, where he will drive the ball that's not a typical ball to drive, or he'll lob a ball that's normally a drivable ball. So, you know, I, I think it it's an advantage and it really helps their team, you know, that he has a little bit more of that offensive uh, thought process. And, you know, and you look at here at, at, the, at the net for Durant and Mitchell, even though West is kind of the hammer on that team, they're still playing the majority of the overheads into that ad side. And, you know, I think, you know, as a coach, I sometimes say we put the ball in positions that we are strongest when we're at the net. And, you know, rather than forcing balls now into the deuce side, where it gets a little bit more imbalance for that team at the net, especially two righties. You know, even though game, they're playing Mitchell into what is the, one game all in the, second the hammer side, they're still really strong at the net. Um, I think sometimes we lose sight of playing the ball into the goose corner. Sometimes it doesn't feel good for that team of two righties when they're up at the net. There's, right. I think more, more holes to lob into. I also think for Durant and Mitchell, you know, I, I think they feel they or they could feel that, you know, they're going to get West to go for a little bit more, hit a little bit more drives. And I think for Durant and Mitchell, they would rather you drive the ball at them than, you know, if Tomas Christian's going to make them hit a lot of lobs and overheads. I, I think they would rather, again, I think it's just for their style, win, lose, or draw, they would rather play the faster pace game. So true. So true. You know, I, I think to your point, they know they're playing the more offensive player, but I think for them, they feel like that fits into their style better. And also it might they might get a few free points off of some uncharacteristic or you know, four shots. Yeah. Yeah, and I you know <laughs> the average average team or player a lot of times they they equate you know, pace on a drive or a big driver as being the stronger player and that's not necessarily um <laughs> you know when you start to build a strategy against the team you know we also we we look for strong and weak okay where's the weaker side but you know sometimes we we're like oh my gosh he's got a big drive or she's got a great drive well, that great drive doesn't necessarily mean they're the stronger player. Right. Right? It uh, sometimes might mean that they're the bigger misser. But that's well, right. not the case you know, here. I just think it's more a style thing than anything else. Especially like when you talk about return of serves, you know, the player that has, you know, hits the ball super hard. Well, you know what? If they only make it three or four out of ten times and their partner hits it three-quarter, half speed, but they're ten out of ten, you know, they're the person – that's going to make you create more opportunities or create get you to make more mistakes because they're giving you more chances. Right. You know, to win three, three return of serve points and lose seven, that's, that's not a winning strategy or it's not a winning percentage. When you see here how the you know, last four games in particular, you know, to end this first set, start of here, the second set. Points tending to be a little bit longer. You see Christian West have you know, started to kind of work the point a little bit more. You 
and I feel like it's it's you know although the score was six one in that first set they were a point here or there from, you know it being four three instead of six one right and and to your point earlier you know about Christian and West have had break opportunities they've had game points when they were serving you know it's just whether they didn't capitalize or Durant and Mitchell played really good points on those, you know, those opportunities. Um, but they, they've had opportunities to, you know, still sort of win more games and be in this, make this a closer match right now. And here we had West in that corner and you see Durant go right into that two side again. A little cat and mouse action where now West and Chris Switch back in the backcourt. You see wow. Johan just saying, yeah, we've had enough of this. 40-15. You get, you get West right, a little chip, uh, you know, it's a little probing drive. And Johan, like you said, no, no there. <laughs> Half volley lob over West's head. Pretty impressive. Sorry. Forty thirty. I'll tell you something I noticed throughout this match, even for Durant and Mitchell, you know, they're making some changes as well. I noticed that late in the first set, Durant wasn't getting to the left side of the court to hit the overheads as much as he was in the beginning. You know, he was allowing Mitchell to hit more of the overheads, and now it's early in the second set, and we see Durant back over there on the left-hand side giving his array of overheads at uh, Christian and West. It's a great point. It just, you know, he puts so much pressure, and I don't know if that's, advantage, Chris. You know, a, a, they're trying to kind of maintain this this big lead. Just another break point for Christian West. And as you've said that, they haven't switched here. <laughs> yep, no, they're just staying on the, they haven't switched to net. Doris Goose. What another missed lob long. That's... Advantage Christian. And I think as they, you know, we look at some of these break points, the quality of uh, the miss from Wes and Christian, you know, what? How, do, how are they losing their, their break point? They've got to be putting the pressure and saying, okay, if we lose this point, you're going to have to beat us. Right. Like there, you know, um, where they missed that lob in the past. Uh, break point. to one in the second set. Durant Mitchell won the first Labor, you should partner for technology and saying okay if we lose this point transformation you're gonna have to through labors right. 
Talent Services Standing Advisory, Niche Staff Augmentation, and Executive Search Labor. Again, thank you to them and all the sponsors here at the 2024 APTA Nationals. Dave, we see uh, Christian West with their first lead of the match here, up a break in the uh, second set, quarterfinal match between our first seeds, Stephen Mitchell and Johan Durant. And I think that our ninth seed, Christian and West. Yeah, and Mike, I totally agree with your point from before, from earlier, that you know when Christian and West have had game points. I don't know if they were necessarily the best points that they were playing. You know, they were, to your point, they were, I don't want to say easy misses, but they certainly didn't make Durant and Mitchell win the points or beat them. Right. You know, we it's saw a couple of like drives wide. I'm sorry, say it again. <laughs> it's kind of like good cholesterol and bad cholesterol. There's a good miss and there's a bad miss. And to your point about like missing a drive wide or in the net, you know, that's that's not the miss that we want to see. No. We always wanted that miss to be through the court. Um, and even we saw a couple of lobs that went long, which, you know, for these guys shouldn't necessarily happen because, you know, they can get every screenshot back. So it, it there's really no gain in, in lobbing that ball that deep. Like that West lefty uh, drive off the side screen. He took a page out of your brother's uh, playbook, didn't he? Yeah, the, but you know, for everyone out there watching, Durant kind of knew that was potentially coming. And did you see how close to the net he got to play that volley? And I think Durant does that as good or better than anyone in the game, where when he senses a drive is coming, he gets right on top of that net. So he's volleying the ball from above the net. He never lets that ball get below the net. Yeah, and I'd say in the game right now, he and maybe uh, McInerney. Like, do you see him closing yeah. the net again? Absolutely, and I love where he put the ball. He brought it right back 20. at the person that's driving because they're the player out of position. Mitchell's got his chin on the net as well. Boy. Yeah, Durant Mitchell. We are tied at two games all, second set. Love 15. I can't believe they called that one out. It's only out by about six feet. <laughs> Check you on temperature. That's a serve I'd hit. <laughs> and we saw in that first point, Mike, we saw a fault there by Durant. You know, and I think if you're the team of Durant Mitchell, you know, you don't want to let Christian and West hang around. You don't want to give them again to our point earlier on. You know, now it's kind of role reversal where Durant and Mitchell, you know, they want to force Christian and West to try to win points. Um, you know, don't let them sort of hang around with with giving, you know, faults or misreturns to serve. So, uh, you know, hopefully we'll see for their team, Durant and Mitchell, just kind of they want to stay locked into how they played that first set. No squash for hopes and dreams, right? Don't give them anything to. No bright side.
Love 30. See a great drop shot there by Eric West. How hard they have to work to win fights. Must have got him there, huh? What was that, guys? Is that okay. 15, 40. That's kind of what we were talking about, Mike. A lob long on the return at love 40. Like, I think that's one Christian would like to have back. And especially, you know, when you are lobbing you know it uh, speaking of a good lob painted the line there you see the range of Stephen Mitchell 30, he said, I'll, you know, I'll show you Johan <laughs> Boy, it's fun to just be able to let the great plate speak for itself, isn't it? Yeah, no, I mean, this is an amazing point. Here. And I think most people that are out there watching thought Christian and West won this point five, five times already. And here we are, it's still going. Yeah. Stephen Mitchell's made a bunch of really good gets on drop shots to extend this point and keep it going. And again, a, a fantastic point, break point, and we have a missed overhead error. It, it's easier said than done, but... Advantage, Durant. We look back at this match at the conclusion, it may be the deciding factor. Um, you know, the quality of points that they played in break point situations, just, I mean, that was a great point, but you know, Cardinal Sin is a missed overhead in a lot of situations. And granted, I, I, I give it to West that he was hitting, you know, going for an aggressive winning opportunity. Yep. Just failed to execute it. I don't argue with the shot. And again, we were at love 40 at one point in this game, and it kind of started with a missed return of serve. Oh, sorry, boy. Now, got it. Good drive. Scores deuce. <laughs> I'd love to see that just how Mitchell and Durant, you know, we've, we've all seen them play so much that we know that they they've got 
multiple gears that they can shift into. But I think one thing that makes them so strong is their ability to to absolutely lock down on the big points. Uh. And you notice that hard roller into the ad side with the lefty there doesn't have quite the same effect that they had on West when he was in the deuce corner. Right. Christian helping with those drives, cutting those volleys off. There we go. Game, Christian West. Christian West lead three games to two in the second set. Narat Mitchell won the first set, six games to one. In collaboration with the APTA, Fusion is at the forefront of personalized gear and apparel. Backed by a team of seasoned industry experts, we provide exclusive access to high-end products from top-tier retail brands, all poised for customization with your club logo, team name, or corporate branding. Our streamlined approach guarantees a hassle-free shopping experience, complemented by custom online storefronts and swift ordering. Visit www.gearbyfusion.com and let Fusion seamlessly weave your branding into elite merchandise. And I can't remember who said it, but it isn't a break until you hold. You know, they've got a... Been trading breaks here on this second set. Love... 15. <laughs> Got an update on the uh, first set of the, the other live stream match. I think uh, Rigolato and Salazar won the first set over Fraser Morgan 6-4, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, no, Mike, I think that's correct. And As you'd mentioned earlier, we're going to have a lot of live stream action today, all really good matches, whichever court you're watching. Again, they've adjusted the schedule uh, based on some uh, forecasted weather that's coming in. They're moving the men's semis to this afternoon. Um, trying to kind of beat the weather. Looks like the women's final is going to be at 6.30. One semifinal match at 2 p.m. this afternoon and then followed immediately by the second semifinal at 4. Love. 
Boy, Mitchell absolutely pounds that forehand, doesn't he? I mean, I don't think that gets he gets enough credit for <laughs> how big he hits the ball. Mike, do you think right now with the score three games to two for Christian and West? you think the tempo has changed a little bit since the first set? I think that uh, they've settled in a little bit. And, and, and yeah, I, I think that we're not seeing as fast to play. You know, the frequency of fast play has kind of seemed to have slowed down. 15, and I think 40. that goes to Christian and Wes's ability to, you know, in that backcourt, it does have a slightly different feel to it. We've got a little bit of a toe hold here in this uh, second set a little bit more. Yeah, I think that was all Mitchell wanted. You know, I think the volleys at this level, at the highest level, it's just amazing how, you know, they, they're just, I mean, I'd love to have a, a heartbeat monitor on them. You know, all these top players, when that ball's being ripped at them, it's like they don't even blink. Here we see West Lord and Christian Deuce. fighting off three break points. Brings us back to Deuce. Advantage West. West torqued that one up a little bit more, didn't he? Game. Great Christian service West. game. They lead the second set four games to two. A little bit, Mike. We're just seeing a little bit of role reversal here with I Christian and West say coming the back. Exact to same thing. Yeah. And I think, David, we see a little bit of a, a slide. You know, it's tough to be, you look at Johan Durant and Stephen Mitchell right now, they've, they've slipped a little bit. And in the sense that, you know, you see an uncharacteristic error off the overhead from Durant on, on what was a rather benign shot, not really going for anything. And I think that's part of the game. Um, do we know what happened there? Maybe did the door open? Are they playing a let? 
Mike, that's a great point, and I'm glad you said it. And I'm glad that you have mind reading skills because I was thinking the same thing, but I, I didn't want to be the one to say that I think Mitchell and Durant is slipping a little bit right now. <laughs> yeah, and you know, it, it's it's kind of it's and it's not a negative. It I think it's just the course of a match. You you've got to expect these ebbs and flows, and you know, as we as you know, you know, the, the momentum shifts in this game are quick and severe and I think one of the big lessons that they you know we want to take out of that is boy the quicker you can stop the slide the better off you're going to be and I think that's a, an important thing that you know recognize it and say okay let's make that last game the worst game that we play here um, 15 all and I also think it's a expect go ahead I also think it's a credit to West and Christian that they've kind of taken the air out of the ball a little bit, you know, maybe causing Durant and Mitchell to relax a little bit or, you know, because they came out locked in. They were they were locked in and they were fired up. And, you know, I think West and Christian have done a good job of slowing this play down now. So true. So true. And. You know, the, the ebbs and flows. And Mike, I don't know what the exact number is, but, you know, maybe in the first set, the points were going on where they were lasting, you know, 10 shots, 15 shots, where now in the second set, we're seeing shot ball, we're, we're seeing points that are 40, 50, 60 shots, and you know, that kind of wears on you as well. Yeah, and I think it's, a, you know, these these slides are more of a mental slide, you know, just a little bit regression um, mentally. And and that's a length of point thing, uh, especially when you're the, you're being forced to slow down, <laughs> you know, as Durant and Mitchell are based on Christian West play. Um, Great, great point, 15, Christian. 30. Great finish there with that drive. Also, I think the switch on the baseline between Christian and West is taking away a little bit of the ability for Durant and Mitchell to keep hitting a lot of those speed up overheads and, and create faster play. And, and the, the big reason for that is now we have two forehands on the outside, you know, along the side wires and, you know, those hard balls are predominantly hit, you know, like a back side wire and it's falling right into forehand drive for both players. Right. And for the, for, West and Christian, I mean, they also now have West backhand, which he loves to hit down the middle. a big point. Yep. 
Man, I love that overhead that Durant hits, that slow and low up the middle of the court in a low contact point on his overhead, hitting with great depth but no pace. And it's super tricky because if you let all of them go to the screen, some of them don't even get there and others barely get there and die on the back screen. So, you know, he, he went through the whole nationals up in uh, Connecticut where – you know, that was kind of the only overhead he was winning points on was that splash down the middle. 40, 30. And even the even the ball that isn't slashed, that isn't, you know, isn't an offensive shot, it's still if they let it go to the screen, they're lobbing the ball from below their knees, you know. So it it, right. it does have a kind of an offensive component that it it's not an easy ball to be lobbing. And I think the average player you know, it thinks that we got to hit every overhead down into the court, and then that ball pops up, making it an easier screen to be playing off, you know, lobbing off. Of. second set. Durant Mitchell won the first set, six games to one. As we heard our chair umpire, David Najedlik, Durant Mitchell are down 3-4 here. Ball change. But that was a statement game in my, my opinion. They really tightened it up. Played a fantastic game there to keep this set within reach. Mike, I feel like this is going to be a really important big game for Christian and West. Because I think, you know, much rather Durant and Mitchell be serving at 3 5 rather than 4. Yeah, it does seem to be absolutely huge. 15, whoa. And for Christian and West, I don't think, you know, they want Durant Mitchell gaining or building any kind of momentum right now. They kind of have them, you know, sort of in a neutral mindset or neutral uh, play. They don't want to let them get any momentum and any energy, you know, for the rest of this going, you know, for the next couple of games. 15 all. Switch to get Johan back over on the left hand side. To basically, run back here.
Great drive from West. You know, and we saw a lot of good patience there, you know, waiting till Durant was off the net and driving it back at him, which I think is different. A little bit in the first set, as I mentioned, you know, Christian and West was getting Durant and Mitchell off the net, but they were driving it more. There you go. We see Durant reach again, where in the first set, they were hitting more of those balls at the net player. Yeah, yeah. Great point. But now they're getting, you know, medium pace drives to the player off the net, causing them to make a more difficult volley. Dave, I think, you know, when, when you see how the, the points have slowed down, how, how Christian West have been able to slow these points down, uh, you know, they, they, in effect, are forcing now Mitchell and Durant to play at a different speed. Um, and you, when it's done correctly, there's really not much that Durant and Mitchell can do to play that point, speed that point back up. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, no, I, I agree. You know, and we talked about it earlier on where, you know, if you gave Durant Mitchell, you know, options as to how they wanted the speed of the match to go, I don't think this is the one they're picking. They want more drives, yeah. volleys, hard overheads, fast pace action. They want movement. They want activity. They don't want this kind of, you know, standing still. They, they want movement. That hard three, overhead, set. as we've mentioned in the past, now is being tracked down on the forehand side of either the lefty West or the righty Christian. So it doesn't have quite the same uh, effectiveness to it because they're able to drive that. Mike, you know what's interesting for everyone out there watching? That Christian and West, their game plan hasn't changed. You know, they're still sticking with the same game plan that they started in, you know, the first point of the match. But just by them switching sides on the baseline has changed this match dramatically. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. It's, it's 15, you know, they're executing oh. the strategy from, you know, a different corner in the backcourt, but yet it's the same strategy. And I think that the other thing that, that that switch has done is where West and the Deuce side was more reactionary and defensive and less engaged in, in kind of his offense was a lot kind of uh, neutered his offense 30, a little bit more. 15. You see it definitely it's had a big effect on his ability to kind of create from that backcourt. Like it's interesting how long it would take 
Yeah, yeah, and back bed. to that dude or that bad side. I was waiting to see how long it would take to get west out of that corner. Well, and that's what I was going to say is it's interesting that Mitchell hit three overhead. And did you notice the speed of play, how it got quicker on just those three overheads? Yes. Lead five games to four in the second set. Murat Mitchell won the first set, six games to one. West to serve. Well, this is what we paid for right here. Five serving four, serving for the second set here. Fifteen, love. Interesting play there by West, while Christian's at the backcourt serving and coming in. A little sneak attack. Fifteen, all. A little bit of a reach volley there by Christian. And we've seen three missed volleys. 15, you know, two, for, 30. two for Christian, one for uh, Mitchell, and all three of them were the reach. There's a great lesson in there. If you've got a reach for it, you're better off letting that ball go through and play it off the back screen. Fifteen forty. A little bit of a sloppy start for this game here for thirty. Christian 40. and West, but they get one back there with the missed return. No reach on that volley, was there? <laughs> Absolutely lined up in front of it. Yeah, no, he was ready for that Locked one. Locked it. Call that the May tag. He had him in the spin cycle. Yeah. <laughs> he handled it quite well. Yep, no good recovery there by West. Didn't have it. Yohan was right there to get it. to deuce that was a huge huge point if they can capitalize here Mike, we're seeing that, you know, earlier on in this match in the first set, it was Durant and Mitchell that were, you know, had several games where they were down Love 40 or 15-40, and they came back to bring it back to Deuce and win those games. Now and then it seems to be that Christian and West are the ones that are down in games. That was so we have true. A set point. We have a set point here for Christian and West. Wow, and that is game set, Christian West. 
Match tied, one set all. Boy, I think we'll be taking it uh, to uh, just a message. We have a, a message coming up here. back to the APTA tour. We're live from the Country Club bringing you the 2024 APTA Boston Nationals. I'm Mike Raleigh along with Dave Broderick and we are now into fixing to start here the third set between Durant and Mitchell and Christian and West. Durant and Mitchell won the first set 6-1. Christian West uh, turned things around here in the second set and won a 6-4. Great second set. Um, Dave, your thoughts there? Well, I, I think it, what we talked about in the beginning kind of happened during that match where West and Christian were able to slow the pace of play down on Durant Mitchell and, uh, you know, kind of claw their way back into this match methodically and patiently. And I think if you're the team of Durant Mitchell, I think, you know, for this third set, they've got to figure out a way to speed up play and not, not let... West and uh, Christian feel comfortable like they did in that second set, whether it be at the baseline or the net. Yeah, and we had a bit of a, a role reversal, as you had mentioned at the end of that second set with, you know, not maybe missed opportunities, but uh, you know, numerous break points, big leagues and games that kind of got uh, squandered for Christian West in the first set. They were the ones that were kind of had a, had a couple big leads and break points and failed to convert. And then we saw that happen with Stephen Mitchell and Johan Durant in the second set. And I think in the second set, we also saw a few more unforced errors by Durant and Mitchell that we weren't seeing in the first set. Mm -hmm. Love 15. Yeah, and that 4-5 four, four, game that they played, they where they had the 40-love lead, I think they had big drives that they both, uh, they both have missed one. Uh, they both each missed one drive long. Maybe overcooked them. Like if you're Durant Mitchell, even though it's coming off the back screen to Christian's forehand, when they're at the net, would you like to maybe see them start going back to the hard roller to the forehand corner or to the do side? And I like the I like the, the I, I, I'd call it a heavy roller, uh, maybe not the 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 big cannon, you know, that comes all the way up the net, but that that heavy roller with. You know, heavy spin 15. tends to kind of stay low, especially if it's kind of in that back, that back panel, the 
back strain. Right. That, you know, and you know, you you you, and then mixing in that that bomb that Johan loves to hit every once in a while. And even if he's hitting that heavy roller into the side screen, it tends to stay lower where it'll jump out of the ad side with the roller. can bring it can he <laughs> yeah and you know i bring think that's a forehand that big i think that's another factor that you know by switching sides on the baseline it, it's really sort of allowed west to insert himself in this game match Durant mitchell they lead the third set one game to love I mean, I like how Durant and Mitchell have come out to start that start that third set. Now, pretty emphatic. A little bit of a statement game there. Came out solid. Do you think when you know, the, the West and Christian started the first set and played the majority of the first set with a lot of serving and staying back. And we see here that they, you know, they served and volleyed. I almost think that they're, they have shown that they're better right now, at least historically in that second set, better in the backcourt. Wouldn't you agree? No, I, I do. It's kind of hard to, hard to believe. Great and dig, to your, po and to your point, I, I think they they did. They stayed in the second set, won the second set, predominantly from the back court. David, I got a little correction. I said a play is reactionary when it should be reactive. One of my uh, members, Betsy Price, just emailed or texted me and saying I should uh, probably correct that. The play is reactive and not reactionary like the Boston Tea Party. All right. Okay, well. Whoa, I thought she was a banker, 30. not English major. Thank you, Betsy. <laughs> probably caught that and didn't want to correct me right David no, I got to be honest with an accounting degree uh, you know I'm I'm more numbers than I am words <laughs> great hands there by Duran and Tomas Christian Really good lesson there. You notice that great lob from Mitchell and how Johan Durant made a strong move to the middle of the court to create kind of his drive opportunities by improving his position. And that's one of the things I try to talk to all the players, a lot of the players I coach where you know, great shots don't create opportunities, 
a lot of times great movement 15, is what creates 30. opportunities for you, whether it be at the net or the baseline. Boy, I'm going to steal that. You mind if I steal it as long as I give you credit? Not at all. Not at all. I'll tell you, Durant missed that ball, you know, with that little kind of moving. But that's one of the first times he's sort of forced play by moving in in a while. So, I'm, you know, I, I'm sure he's a little upset that he missed that shot. But you know what? I like that he's starting to move forward again and put a little bit of pressure on Christian and uh, West. Well, that's a great point. Great overhead. Dave, we saw that, that hard overhead where Johan just aimed right at the crease. If he were given a hundred balls from the volley machine, how many, what percentage of those hundred, how many of the hundred do you think he would hit into the corner? The dead, the dead corner. Probably close to 96, 97% of them if he was aiming at the Nick. Do you, do you pretty high so? amount. You think it'd be that high percentage? I do. And, and I was thinking about this earlier, you know, even from the, actually thinking about it in the first game of this third set where at this stage of the game, I think if you're, Durant and Mitchell hitting overheads. There's there's no disadvantage of aiming at the nick right now, and just you know we've seen them yeah. at a couple of points when they're at the net just by aiming at the nick and the ball coming out at a little bit of a funny angle. Well, we've seen uh, two balls at the nick on the the overheads, and then uh, Johan must have hurt us and he slammed that forehand drive return right <laughs> right throw him into the nick uh, from the baseline. There it is. There you go. We saw the replay of Durant aiming for the nick and winning the point. Great gets in the corner there by Durant on some really yeah, he's making good overheads by Christian. He made that look easy. Mike, what do you think? You go all the way back to, you know, 20 shots ago, and Durant hit that one overhead, and it almost looked like to say he hit a quote-unquote not great overhead. I think he almost did it on purpose to create transition and movement. Because again, we want, they want to be playing a faster paced game. And, you know, you kind of, I watched him and I saw him hit that overhead. And as soon as he hit it, he was already backing up, looking to create activity, looking to create movement by giving up the net. Yeah. And it's almost, you know, it's a, I, I agree 100% that he is just looking to get. You know, 
Change the speed, change the location. Shake things up a little bit. Oh, man. Hometown crowd loves that one. And I hate to say that that is something that <laughs> will fuel, you know, the, the momentum here. I mean, when you hit an overhead that goes out of the court off of your opponent, that's a bit of a, uh, <laughs> a statement, wouldn't you say? I, I do, but I, I would definitely say, agree with you. But I'll tell you what, the ball going out of the court may have benefited um, Christian and West just kind of slowing things down a little bit. Okay, yeah. Because again, for Christian and West, they don't want Durant and Mitchell turning the, uh, you know, engines back on and going full steam ahead. That's that's not what they want to see happen in this third set. Very subtle. You notice there, Johan hit three rollers into uh, Christian's backhand. But the first two were heavy and a little firmer, and then he just took the pace, all the pace off of that third one, and just to keep him off balance. And it also. The variety he has on his overheads is incredible. It's amazing, right? He's got so much variety. And, you know, I think also we've got to, from the second set on, We've kind of got to give a lot of credit to Christian and West that the times that Mitchell and Durant are trying to speed the ball up from the net, they're not really getting, they're not getting, they're not falling for the trap. You know, they're, they're still slowing the pace down and waiting for the right opportunity. Help me, help me. Boy, the Johan Durant forehand in this, uh, the second, third set, sorry. He has hit some great spot drives, hasn't he? Yeah, no, he's 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 hit him hard. He's spotted him. He's changing up pace. And, you know, he's definitely keeping them off balance at the net. And again, Mike, I think that's where Johan hits that overhead knowing that he's going to create offense or, you know, he's going to, he's going to create offense for uh, Christian and West, but he wants that because he wants the movement. He wants the, the fast play. He doesn't right. want to get lulled into being back on the baseline or at the net. Game, Durant Mitchell. Durant Mitchell lead three games to love in the third set. Christian to serve. And again, I think this is just becoming a game of a different tempo. You know, this is more indicative of what we saw in the first set with the faster paced action. A lot more drives, a lot more volleys, a lot of transition. Then we saw kind of Christian and West uh, you know, slowing the pace of play down and, and now we're seeing that faster paced action now that, you know, this is the game Durant and Mitchell are looking to play. Yeah, and especially in that that last game, the third game of this third set, that was that was kind of the speed that the entire first set was played at, wouldn't you agree? I one hundred percent. And 
Mike, it's interesting because the success that Mitchell and Duran have had early on in this third set of speeding play up, I'm a little surprised that they're even letting the points go this long before they're trying to speed up play or, or you know, create activity. Now, would you say off of, uh, you know, the counter to when Johan does hit that bail hard overhead, kind of trying to create and speed things up, is the antidote to that, them not falling for it, and just kind of, you know, Christian and West uh, not hitting that ball hard and maybe not taking over the net, just kind of blocking it back and staying in the backcourt? No, I, I agree 100% with that. And, you know, like I said earlier, that you got to give them credit for not falling into that trap. And, you know, they did such a good job in the second set. But going back to the last game, I think the shots that Durant and Mitchell were hitting, creating that transition, it, it didn't allow Christian and West just to lob it back up again and stay back on the baseline. They, they had to come forward and play those shots. Love. 15. I just think so far in this third set, you know, Durant and Mitchell are not letting Christian and West do what they want to do. Page out of Johan book, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Come on. What a volley there by Tomas Christian. See a big forehand there by Christian again. That was all set up by good movement. He saw that the ball was going cross court to Mitchell and he slid to his left to cut, uh, into the middle of the court to really open up that forehand drive. Again, that, like you said, that movement creating the opportunity not the great shot necessarily right you're gonna have to 15, uh, you're gonna have to 30. send me that quote again maybe I'll rewatch the because uh, that's pure gospel well Mike that was 20 minutes ago I've already called the patent office and put in a request so <laughs> okay. you may have to speak with my credit. representatives to get that okay I'll, I'll give you credit you're gonna <laughs> trademark that Eric West might want that last attempt at the cutter overhead back. That's one of those, oh no, great shot. Yeah, you, you're either a hero or, the, you know, it's. Or you wish he'd tried. Line. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. 
Boy, that's a missed fall Five, due to the 40. big spin from West Lefty spin off that overhead. Yeah, show the ball kick right back into Mitchell's body. Good lob there that forcing Johan playing the back half of the court. It's tough to speed up from back there. Yeah, and, and you know, this is a huge point for Christian and West. And, you know, I think they're doing a really good job of, you know, going back to being patient and waiting for, you know, the right opportunity to, to hit a good solid shot. On these lobs to Mitchell, I would like to see Christian maybe move a little bit more to the middle, looking to set up a, a possible drive while you know, we're getting them moving. But there was an opportunity hey, when a little Durant, long. Mitchell, they lead four games to love, third set. Love 15. What a great volley from Mitchell. Not only have to deal with the uh, that hammer coming at him, but also <laughs> avoid Durant. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that was a really good volley. And again, you see, there's. There's Durant moving in and putting pressure on them. And, you know, I think that's something that we've, we haven't we have seen in a while and, you know, since the beginning of the first set. Maybe Christian going for a little bit too much in the last two missed drives he's had in the last three points here. No. 40, good scrambling on this point by Christian and West just to stay in the point keep it going game Durant Mitchell Durant Mitchell lead five games to love in the third set Mike Volley is the official sponsor of the APTA for the 2023 2024 season backed by cutting edge ball and player tracking technology Volley is the innovator of the first AI-enabled racket sports training experience that stimulates point play. By enabling players and pros to record sessions on the court, Volley also delivers off-the-court player analysis and support, all from your phone. Download the Volley app now by searching Volley Racket in your app store. For more information, visit getvolley.com slash get started.
Mike, after watching this okay, match, what are you gonna what are you gonna set the volley machine up to uh, feed you? What are you gonna go practice? Oh man, I did the list is long. I got you know I'm gonna have to get up early. <laughs> <laughs> Put in a full day's work. You can't teach speed. Yeah, you can't teach speed. You know, in, uh, in brains either. So I, I, I'm, 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 we're gonna, we're gonna have some issues here. You know, Dave, we've seen, you know, how hard it is, or as well as West and. Christian have been able to slow it down and you know wow hometown crowd is loving that little One, fadeaway cut 15. dropper that was pretty impressive but it is amazing how you know how hard it is against a team like Mitchell and Durant that they were they were effectively doing it but they couldn't it wasn't sustainable and that's just, you know, a, a, a shout out to Durant and Mitchell and how good they are. 1530. I am here. Yeah. Oh, sorry. 30 all. And I, I think, Mike, from what we were talking about earlier, like you said, you know, as much as it was sort of, you know, it seemed like in the in the towards the end of the first set, second set, Christian and West were able to kind of get, you know, Durant and Mitchell to kind of play the speed that they wanted to. To your point, it worked, but Mitchell and Christian, uh, uh, Christian and West, having to win point after point Advantage. after point. And sometimes several times, right, that, that's eventually going to wear on them as well and last for so long. And we see a match point yeah. here for Durant and Mitchell. Great gets there by Eric West on the waterfall yeah, overhead by Durant. It's a great move from Christian. You saw him twice try to cut that, was looking to cut that pull off. And Mitchell finally put the ball in a bad spot and allowing him to climb that up that sideline. Up and they allows him to save a, a match point. Mitchell. All right, match point number two. And I think that last try, you know, attempt at the slash winner by 
um, West is, is just, it's the effect of how hard it is to win points against a team like Durant Mitchell. Yeah. That was what they just did there, right? Yeah, it, it just it's so hard to win points. Play a little pickleball point. Well, they are in the business of pickleball these days. That's right. Okay, we got a game point here for Eric West. West. Christian West, Durant Mitchell lead five Christian. games to one, third set. Putting some miles on that point. Yeah, they coast uh, to coast. They held off two match points. Could this be the? Uh, could this be a turning point here? Stranger things have happened. So there we see oh, Durant there aiming is. for the nick, yeah. 30, love. And I would say 100% that was his target, without a he doubt. Just, he just said to Mitchell, why haven't I been doing this the whole match? <laughs> Did he really? I don't, I don't know what he said, but especially after I told him out of 100 balls, he's hitting the nick 96, 7 times off the volley machine. Why wouldn't he aim there? Boy, a point like this, you just wonder when's that next big overhead coming. <laughs> it's almost like now he's lulling Christian and West into like relaxing and then he's gonna unleash it. Yeah. That's what I said before, the fear of Durant. There's that slash we talked about 40, earlier. 50. Right into the body. And he brings it back to the deuce side of the court. And here we go. We have another more match points here. Yeah, and that ball slides off the paddle and you know moves to the hitter's left and got a missed uh missed. It's just such heavy spin and it's so hard to control. Yeah, because they physically, there we go. Game set and match. Durant Mitchell. 6-1, 4-6, 6-1. Great job, man. Well, Dave, that was a, uh, a real exciting match. Um, we saw some ebbs and flows. And What are your final thoughts on this? Well, I, I think, you know, congratulations to Durant Mitchell for winning and, you know, kind of 
getting it back to the style and speed that they wanted to play. But, you know, you got to take your hat off to uh, West and Christian. You know, they played a really good game, a really good match. They had a good game plan, to your point. Uh, you know, it was just going to... It was, it was tough to play that way the entire match, but they slowed the play down, and, and they, it allowed them to stay in the match and, and make it interesting. Yeah, it, it was a great match to call, and, um, you know, I, I, I think it shows shows how how strong and how well that Johan and Durant or Johan and Steven are playing but uh, big shout out to to West and Christian they played a great match and, um, for everybody watching we will be uh, back shortly for the women's semis uh, I believe uh, starting shortly around noon so uh, for Mike Raleigh and Dave Broderick we will uh, in the, my paddle in 18 APTA YouTube channel. We'll be back here in a little bit. Dave, thanks for your uh, for for letting me join you here today. No, it was a pleasure, Mike. Always a pleasure to do these matches with you, and uh, hopefully we'll be back at it soon. All right, we'll be back in a bit. I'm not sure there's a story, but. No one really paid attention to, in, in Boston, no one was really paying much attention to, to paddle on the national scene. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I mean, and this surprised everyone, not just Boston, Johan is a, a 16 seed wins nationals, and all of a sudden people in Boston are paying attention, like, we have a national champion who plays in our league, and then all of a sudden other really good rackets players, pros, start paying attention, and and paddle just sort of took off from there, and that was because that was the Johan effect in Boston. Johan is, he's kind of like the Tiger Woods in my opinion of our sport, and to watch him play, and to pick up the nuances of how he. He's almost like the conductor, the way he controls a match. No one has done more than you to transform the sport into the incredibly athletic, fast-paced, exciting game that we have today. So on behalf of the APTA Board of Directors and myself, one of your many, many fans on and off the court, I want to congratulate you for your induction into the Platform Tennis Hall of Fame. Congratulations on your Hall of Fame induction. So well deserved. Uh, it's been a pleasure watching you from the chair. One match that really stands out is that final in the rain in New Jersey where you just took over, your serves were hitting nicks, hitting skitters everywhere. Johan, honestly, most people don't know. They think that you're super talented and that you're great and that you're natural, but we all know how hard you work off the court. What is one word you could use to describe Johan Duran? Tenacious. Explosive. Aggressive. <laughs> A ninja. The best. Uh, on behalf of the entire Boston League, we couldn't be more proud about your induction to the Hall of Fame. Well done. Big congratulations, Johan. Uh, a well-deserved honor. And um, the greatest thing about Johan is not only a great player, but even a better guy. I uh, look forward to watching you play for many more years and hopefully winning many more national titles. Bravo, Johan! Congratulations on your APTA Hall of Fame induction. Man, we go way, way back from the crazy trips in Africa. Now in the APTA Hall of Fame. Thank you for your contribution to the game of paddle. You deserve all of this and more, my guy. Hey Buddha, just want to congratulate you on the induction to the Hall of Fame. Really pumped for you. Awesome career. Uh, so much fun to see how you've changed the game. Glad that I could be a small part of it. And uh, let's try and keep it rolling this weekend. Congratulations, Joan, on the induction into the Platform Tennis Hall of Fame. Back in 2010, I was first-hand witness of the coming out party of the Big Cat in Philadelphia. Congratulations, well deserved. Congratulations, Johan Duran, for being inducted in the Hall of Fame. Uh, you definitely deserve it. Probably uh, the greatest of all time who has played this sport. Uh, congratulations. Enjoy your, um, I guess, just Hall of Fame status because you'll be playing and uh, we'll be seeing you soon. You've come a long way. You've had incredible success. And in all sincerity, 
I'm incredibly proud of you as a player, incredibly proud of you as a person, and I'm honored to consider you a good friend. Congratulations again, and I wish you the best of luck this season and in all seasons to come. Surreal, I guess, like everybody else would say, but uh, <laughs> I don't know, we didn't expect, or especially me, I don't know about Jerry, I didn't expect to get close to the final, so I'm, I'm, I'm uh, real surprised. Every day, big decisions are made without full information, overloaded by data, compounded by complexity. Better decisions are made in the light. with clarity and confidence. Aeon is in the business of better decisions.